Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brigadier General Laura Clellan, the Adjutant General of Colorado. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Command Sergeant Major Bill Woods, the Command Senior Enlisted Leader for the Colorado National Guard. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Colonel Julia Plevna. I'm the Colorado National Guard uh, Army State Surgeon. And I'm Lieutenant Colonel Pat Spruce. I'm the State Air Surgeon of Colorado. Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Kara McLean. I'm the Deputy State Surgeon for the Colorado Army National Guard. So I want to thank everyone for joining us at our first Facebook Live Town Hall about the COVID-19 vaccine. We're here to answer your questions about this vaccine and this vaccine is critical to our war against the COVID virus. COVID-19 has been one of the greatest challenges of our lives. It has killed more than 350,000 Americans. With vaccines now available in our state, there is hope and light at the end of this pandemic. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get back to some kind of normalcy. The state of Colorado is documented in the Colorado Immunization Information System. Over 180,000 Coloradoans have already received this life-saving vaccine. 27,000 of them have received both doses. By order of the Governor Jared Polis, Colorado National Guard members have been helping implement the state's vaccine distribution plan. We've been transporting the vaccine to storage locations around the, the state and to medical care facilities administering the vaccine. In order to put an end to this pandemic, we must now carry out an unprecedented effort to administer every dose that we can to our force. And we'll do so in phases to protect our people from the COVID-19 as quickly as possible. The state has a phased allocation plan and the Colorado National Guard has one as well. All Coloradoans are gonna be able to get this vaccine in turn. I encourage all of our DMVA employees, our volunteers and our family members to stay connected through their county public health websites and their medical providers to learn where and when you can get the vaccine. And if you can get it sooner, do so. I would never ask any of you to do anything that I would not be willing to do myself. My civilian employer, a police department, offered me the opportunity to get the voluntary COVID-19 vaccine. I believe this vaccine is both safe and effective. In order to maintain my readiness and to set the example for others, I have received my first dose of the vaccine and I'm scheduled for my second dose in about two weeks. As military members, we should all do our part. I encourage each of you to get the COVID vaccine. This will not only help us to maintain our readiness and allow us to continue our many missions, including our ongoing support of the COVID-19 mission or the COVID-19 response, but it also allows us to protect our families and our friends while they wait to get vaccinated and helps us to protect those who cannot receive the vaccine because of medical conditions. Always ready, always there. Our country is counting on us. We are there to answer our nation's call. As the vaccine becomes available to you, once again, I encourage you to take the opportunity and get it. Until everyone is vaccinated, we should continue the public health orders including wearing masks, washing our hands, and practicing social distancing. It is up to each of us to do our part and lead the way. So now we're gonna answer some of the questions that you've submitted. And the first question, Colonel Plevna is going to answer. So the first question, will essential National Guard staff and activated COVID um, members and our field recruiting team have an opportunity to receive the vaccine first in the phase when they roll out the vaccinations. So phase one vaccinations are for essentially medical personnel providing inpatient care and services. Those National Guard members 
who are directly supporting the COVID-19 response and the Homeland Defense Operation will receive the vaccinate, vaccinate vaccines. Those Colorado National Guard members, because of their mission, are at the highest risk for contracting COVID-19. By vaccinating these members first, we are safeguarding our national security capabilities. Again, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Spruce. Another question that we have is, what is the rollout plan for the vaccine? Are there going to be different groups priority levels for the Colorado National Guard, similar to the phases recommended by the CDC for the civilian population? And so can pregnant service members get the vaccine? Well, we've discussed this phased approach. It is a DOD phased approach that we'll be following, which mirrors somewhat the CDC phased approach. Deployers will be able to receive the vaccine next, but however, after this first phase, but however, it'd be those deploying before July of this year and also have the ability to get both doses prior to departing. The services will detail phases as needed. The question regarding pregnant service members. They should consult with their healthcare provider before receiving the vaccine. And that's really all I can say because it is an individual choice and their healthcare provider knows what's best for them. Okay, my first question from the field is, if I've already had COVID-19, should I still get the vaccine? And the short answer is yes, because right now the immunity following infection is unknown. That period um, of immunity is unknown. And what we think is that the vaccine may be effective in protecting not only those who have already had the infection, but also those who have not yet contracted the virus. And I'll be followed by Colonel Plutna. So the next question, how will we track personnel who receive the COVID vaccine? So DOD will track COVID vaccine documentation through our administration and our existing medical record and our own reporting system. Okay, another good question. What has the DOD done to ensure the vaccines they are distributing are safe? Yeah, that's a big one, right? So, what I can tell you about this is I'm actually going to describe to you the phases of evaluation medications for approval. There's preclinical phase one, phase two. These vaccines that have been approved under experimental use authorization have gone through all the normal phases that all medications and treatments do for approval. There is a second level approval that's licensing, but that will come later. Right now, because we're under such an emergency, we need this vaccine. This vaccine has gone through all the standard processes, although I will say it has been fairly rapid. The reason it's been rapid is because a lot of effort was put towards this, a lot of money, a lot of resources, and the research behind this, these particular vaccines has been going on for decades. So there's been a lot known about it. So the way the vaccine will work is that instead of using a laboratory to produce what your body is responding to, they're using a technique where your body is actually producing it. So the production aspect of this is so much shorter, they're able to produce a lot of the vaccine, therefore produce a lot of studies, huge numbers in these studies beyond what they ever, what they do in most studies. So huge numbers, all the same phases, phases, and the results have been outstanding. So there's not been any shortcuts. It's just been a wonderful process that this could happen rapidly. These drugs have to go through a very detailed process through the FDA to reach this level at which they're approved for use. There has been no shortcut in any way. Time has been compressed, yes, but that was just because of the production time needed. Otherwise, it's met all the criteria for that. And you rest assured that the FDA uh, made all the manufacturers follow every one of the standard guidelines for this to happen.
Okay, the next question from the field and a follow on to Lieutenant Colonel Spruce's response. Will DOD require all service members to receive the vaccine? And the answer is no, this vaccine is offered on a voluntary basis. So right now, all soldiers, airmen, um, all DOD personnel have the opportunity to volunteer to receive the vaccine. At some point, if the FDA licenses this formally, there may be a requirement for all personnel to receive the vaccine or for specific uh, fields, um, personnel in specific fields to receive the vaccine. But at this time, it is completely voluntary. As a follow on to that, I think it's important for everyone to note that the military medical record system has a requirement for us to document whether or not you receive it. So um, if you volunteer to receive the vaccine, you will complete a screening form um, and receive your vaccine. If you decline to receive the vaccine on a voluntary basis at this time, you will complete a declination form, which is the same as a screening form. It just indicates that you decline to receive the vaccine at this time. Um, and we will put that in your medical record and update our respective medical record systems. Um, that is not for adverse action of any kind. It is really just to indicate um, as we track that we ensure that we offer everybody the opportunity to receive the vaccine and for ordering purposes in the long term to make sure that we have enough vaccine on hand for all of those who volunteer to receive it. Thank you. Okay, I'll take the next question. Will state employees be required to re receive a vaccine? And will new hires be required to have been vaccinated to be considered for employment? The state's not requiring employees to have a vaccine. It's a personal choice. And new hires will not be required to take, uh, take the vaccine as a condition of employment. The state is giving out vaccines in a, central in a centralized manner in phases designed to save as many lives as possible. Employees are eligible to obtain the vaccine from their healthcare providers if they'd prefer not to share personal health information in order to qualify for one of those specific phases. And I'll be followed by Carl Plathna. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the next question uh, has to do with the vaccine that is the messenger RNA versus a traditional type of vaccine like the Johnson & Johnson one. I'm trying to decide what is ideal. I had a doctor tell me I may, it may be better for me to wait for the traditional vaccine, but how do I know which one I should take? Can you tell me some pros and cons of each? So first and foremost, your medical provider is always the person that knows you best and can determine what is best and ideal for, for you. The release of other means can't be predicted and can't be determined. So when you have availability and the first available vaccine for you, um, we encourage you to take that vaccine because we may not know when the next um, onset of doses are coming out. That people are protecting themselves as well as their family and all the people that they interact with. So the vaccine gives you more um, protection for you and your family. Okay, I got a question. Colorado National Guard, excuse me, will the vaccine be administered by Colorado National Guard personnel and or will soldiers and airmen receive it from civilian clinics? When you receive, you, when you do receive the vaccine through the guard, it will be through qualified and trained military personnel. However, if you have the opportunity to receive the vaccine on the civilian side, I recommend you do. It certainly could be quicker to get that done. However, if you do get it done outside, make sure you provide documentation to the military. It's just like the flu shot. If you get it out in town, we need to have it documented. Okay, and our final pre-submitted question from the field. What is the plan to ensure safe vaccinations to personnel who have allergies or autoimmune disorders? So again, I wanna reiterate that this is a voluntary vaccine. If you have concerns regarding your health history or allergies or autoimmune disorders or disease, you should really consult with your medical professional, um, your healthcare provider. And then if you choose to receive the vaccine, if you choose to volunteer to receive the vaccine, um, there's a custom, customary mandatory waiting period after you receive the vaccine. So there will be a reception area where you will wait 15 to 30 minutes um, and there will be subject matter experts and providers available to speak with if you have questions or concerns following the, the vaccine. 
Okay, thank you everyone for sending us your questions. We do have time for a few more questions from our face our Facebook viewers. So um, I'd like to pass it off and see if we have any more questions to answer. All right, so one Facebook viewer asked, if I already had COVID, do I still need to get the vaccine? I'd be happy to answer that question. Okay. Yes, it's recommended you do. The immunity you get from the vaccine will last much longer than the immunity you get from the illness itself. Right now, CDC says, CDC says you get about 90 days. That's being studied. It may be a little bit longer, but we know that the vaccine is going to be a much more durable immunization. Okay, thank you. Is there any confliction between getting the influenza flu shot and also receiving the COVID-19 vaccine? I can answer that one. Um, both of those uh, immunizations can be done simultaneously and they are not contraindicated. So you're able to get your flu shot as well as still get the COVID-19 vaccine without any having without having any complications with that. If there is any kind of um, um, reaction that a person may have, they would be able to observe that like uh, Lieutenant Colonel McLean said in the observation area after the vaccine but um, they are not contraindicated and you can get both of those at the same time or um, in the same week. Thank you. Okay, so why should we receive the first available vaccine when there are several others still in trials versus getting it now? I'd be happy to answer that question also. So these, these two that we have on the market right now that are available to Pfizer and Moderna, we actually have a Moderna for our members, which we're very happy about because the logistics of handling it are much more simple. Um, it's quite complex for the Pfizer product. The studies on these two vaccines are very similar. We're talking about 95% efficacy, which is extremely high when you talk about immunizations. And there's no reason to believe that any additional vaccine coming out is going to be any better than that. We're happy with what we got. We're happy with the logistics involved of transporting it, storing it, and administering it. And I think we're, uh, we're in a really good spot with what we have. This one's about the phases, including family members. When will family members of service members be able to get the vaccine or will there ever be a point that they will? I can, I can answer that one. Um, there has been a tier and phases set up for um, all different um, groups and medical high risks and first providers. So as the vaccines become more available, um, we will progress down the tier of who is next in line to receive the vaccines. So we don't know exactly when all the other doses will be coming out, but based on the tier is when the different phases of high risk, first responders, medical providers, military personnel, personnel, people will all be administered. So the tier is available on, on the CDC uh, websites, and you can go in and see where the different groups are illustrated on the, on the schema mapping. And I'd like to add to that, that we are currently staffing that as an action, and we should have an answer on our next Facebook town hall. Thank you. So this is about the vaccination process of when you receive the vaccine. How will the guard ensure safety when receiving the vaccine, such as if a side effect will occur? I can answer that, that one. one. Go ahead, Julia. Um, so just like every other immunization, um, from the time you're an infant to an adult, 
when a vaccine is it's administered, there's a holding period after that time for approximately 15 minutes to 30 minutes. During that holding period is usually when any kind of severe reaction um, or adverse reaction would present. Uh, in the holding area, you're still where all the medical personnel are available and they can administer any type of um, first aid or any type of EMS type of medical assistance at that time in the yeah, in observation room. So all of your medical staff, the trained um, individuals that are uh, administering the vaccine, as well as doctors and nurses and staff are around uh, for all safety protection issues. Thank you. So if a Colorado National Guard member gets the vaccine through a civilian health care provider, what type of documentation is required in order to receive credit and it be in our military immunization records? If you're familiar with the process at all, they have to provide you with the with documentation of the immunization. It'll provide uh, specifics that don't matter to you, things like lot number and things like that, but we care about that. Uh, and there, will, there is an official recording of your dates and also when your second dose is due. So they will provide you with their particular form. It's not a, it's not a military form necessarily. It's just documentation that we can enter into either the Army or Air medical records to confirm that you received it. Thank you. Does the vaccine protect against the new strand of COVID-19 that has been found? Every, all evidence so far shows that the current vaccines are effective against the different variants that are appearing. There's, there's no evidence to this point that they are any, they react any differently to the immunization. The only difference that we're seeing in the variants, they cause the exact same disease. They just tend to spread a little easier. Thank you, sir. So as mentioned of the vaccine being voluntary, what if my unit is being mobilized as Title 10? Is it still voluntary? I can answer that one. Um, the vaccine is always voluntary. And like Lieutenant Colonel um, McLean said, if a person wants to decline, there's paperwork that they have to fill out for the declination of receiving the vaccine. Thank you. And then also as mentioned where to find the actual tier set for DOD, who would I contact to know when my unit is available or is up to receive the vaccine? Because of the scheduling required for these vaccines, you gotta realize we have to keep them uh, in certain conditions. Uh, be able to thaw them and, and use them in a timely way. We actually are scheduling the immunization events. So uh, name by name, uh, you will be informed of the time and the date and the place uh, for these immunizations. So after receiving the first vaccine, is there an exact time when I would have to be back to receive the second dose? How would that look with getting the second dose? So when you receive the vaccine, at the time um, it's administered, you're given a card and they usually will schedule you uh, about three weeks out from the time you had your first appointment uh, where you received the vaccine. So at that time, when you're there, they will usually have you set an appointment before you leave the observation room from the first administration of the vaccine. So it is a coordinated time um, and they do um, indicate that they want it on a about a 21 day turnaround time. And there is some leeway on that based on people's work schedule, but it's usually scheduled when you're leaving from the first administration appointment.
To receive the vaccine, will we be put on orders if we're given the vaccine? Or will this be covered by TRICARE or the VA, et cetera? Please explain. Right now, you will have to be in status to receive the vaccine. Unless, obviously, as a DSG, if you have the opportunity to get it on the outside, which hopefully the state has a plan as they move down through their tiers, uh, that they will have it readily available uh, throughout the state that you can receive it. Otherwise, as we, we present it in, in the guard, you'll be in status. We spoke about different types of the vaccine. For the military, which type would it be versus the Moderna or the Pittsburgh vaccine? As I mentioned earlier, we're very fortunate that we have the Moderna vaccine. Uh, again, for, for logistical purposes, it's much simpler to deal with. Uh, the efficacy is the same. Uh, it is a 28 day waiting period between the shots for the Moderna, vice 21 for the Pfizer. So um, we're very happy that we have that. We suspect that's probably what's going to continue. Again, it really involves more around what the military has access to and the ability to transport and store it. Uh, and the Moderna is the one we want. What happens if someone were to notice an effect later on in the process after receiving the vaccine? Who should I contact? You can always contact your primary care provider or you can contact um, the, the unit where the um, vaccine was administered. If, if we have availability uh, to meet with your primary care provider, um, you would wanna do that first. If the adverse reaction was becoming something um, that is more life-threatening, you could always go to an urgent care center or to a local emergency room provider. And this is a question that's been asked a few times and we've answered, but it'd be great to get it back out again. Um, how do we know what tier we are currently on when we move on to the next phase of vaccinations? Doc Spruce, can you take that question? I'd be happy to. I was, I was having tapping problems trying to get my uh, video engaged. Uh, so again, this, this, these tiers are set out by DOD. And right now our supplies are not, um, we don't have a large number, but we're able, we're looking right now to get through our first tier, uh, some of our national assets, et cetera. And as, the supply chain becomes more refined that we expect to happen, uh, that we can start regularly scheduling, scheduling units, you literally will know your name, your date, your time to show up. That is a process that currently has been done through uh, JFHQ. And at some point as we move down the tiers, uh, it will divvy up between the services but the process should be exactly the same. Thank you. And we have one more question. Is there a teeter after the initial two doses? There is no follow on titers. Um, again, the research has shown that you're gonna get adequate immunity. You specifically, like what your number is, no, there's not going to be any follow on to that. We don't have the ability to do that. All right. So that's all we have time for today. But say thank you for joining us and thank you for all the questions that you uh, sent in and that you asked today. I look forward to seeing you at our next, our next Facebook Live. And, and if we didn't answer your question, bears no. Um, and our medical team will answer your question as soon as possible. 
Um, I ask that you stay, you all stay ready um, and stay safe uh, so that we can always be ready and always there for our state and federal missions. Thank you.